Good morning, dear friends, and a warm welcome to this morning's adoration and retreat as we pray with the divine mercy and letting the divine mercy flood our souls so that the Lord's mercy will bring about change and transformation in so many things that are connected to our life. So let us offer it trusting in the Lord's mercy to touch our hearts, to bless us. Let us all kneel as we invite the Lord in the blessed sacrament and pray, O sacrament most holy. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, O praise and all. O Lord, in the blessed sacrament, we offer our praise and adoration to you. We offer our hearts to you. You who know our hearts through and through, you know what we are going through this morning. You know what is happening within us, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. You know everything that's connected to us, O oh Jesus. There's nothing that's hidden from you. And trusting in your mercy and love, we offer ourselves to you. Touch, Lord, where you know it is good to touch. Bless, Lord, where you know we need blessings. Strengthen, Lord, where you know we need strength. Anoint us, O Lord, in the blessed sacrament. We surrender our lives to you. O Sacrament Most Holy. We worship you, we adore you, Jesus. We open our hearts to you and we praise and we worship and we glorify your holy name, O oh Jesus. Praise you, Lord, we worship you. We adore you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you for the gift of life you have given us, Jesus. We look around us and we praise you for everything that you have provided us with. You have always been there and you have always blessed us. We thank you. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We worship you. We adore you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabaramalaya Shantarariya. We praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We thank you. We adore you, Jesus. We glorify you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We glorify you. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We thank you. We adore you, Jesus. For whatever we have in life, we praise you, Jesus. For the family you have blessed us with, we thank you and praise you, Jesus. For our siblings, we thank and praise you, Jesus. For our children, we thank and praise you, Jesus. For our church communities, we thank and praise you, Jesus. 
for this adoration and retreat we thank and praise you jesus hallelujah hallelujah jesus we praise you for our homes we thank and praise you jesus hallelujah hallelujah praise you jesus for our workspace we thank and praise you jesus for our businesses we thank and praise you jesus hallelujah lord hallelujah praise you jesus we glorify you hallelujah 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 shabara malaga shantarari araria praise you jesus we worship you we adore you hallelujah feel his presence move around us as the scripture says god dwells in the praises of his people he's dwelling in our praises offer our praise from the inner depths of our heart offer our praise joyfully let every moment of this day turn into a moment of praise wherever we go whoever we speak to whatever we do let it turn into a moment of praise constantly thinking about my lord and savior jesus christ constantly thanking my lord and savior for having provided me with what he has given let me never be blind o oh jesus to your blessings and let me never be dumb that i refuse to praise you for those blessings let my tongue sing your praises for lord today brings me greater challenges than i had yesterday today there are new problems i need to face new struggles i will need to go through and they are so different from what i went through yesterday you saw me through yesterday jesus on this new day i pray that you will see me through the struggles of today so lord i need your presence desperately far more than i needed it yesterday I thank you for being there with me yesterday. I thank you for taking me through tough moments yesterday. Especially decisive moments you were there for me. Today Lord, the challenges are new. The struggles are new and many of them seem far deeper than what it was yesterday. So I pray I need you more Jesus more than how I've needed you yesterday I need you today I pray words can so say much more than words can say i need you more than ever before than ever before i need you lord i need you lord i need you lord more than the air more than the air i breathe more than the more song than the soul.
more than yesterday jesus so much more so much more than words can say i need you more than ever before i need you lord i need you lord the lord is giving us strength far more than we had yesterday the lord is giving that strength to us today Peter Aransa Vina My power and grace will go with you every moment of this day says the Lord Someone who's been having a struggle with your toes it's creating an imbalance when you're standing the Lord is touching and healing you someone whose nerves around the hips have been damaged and the pain moves right down till your ankles the lord is touching and healing someone having a problem with your calf muscle the lord is healing there's a person who has a job interview today this has been in the past 2 weeks it has been your fifth interview and you're offering it to the lord in belief the lord is listening to your prayer someone having a problem of irregular heartbeat and you've been going for checkups in connection to this the lord is touching you pray and offer all the challenges of today as you pray i need you more jesus far more than my yesterday I pray that I need your presence more today. I need you more, Jesus. I need you more. More than yes today I need you more. So much I need you more Jesus I need you more more than yes today I need you more so much more the words can say I need you more than ever before I need someone whose home is infected with certain kinds of insects and whatever you've been trying out has not been able to get rid of them you've been praying about this the lord is blessing he's delivering your home from that affliction a person whose left heel has a problem you struggle to stand because of that pain on your left heel the lord touches manuel the lord is touching and blessing you zavia the lord is touching and blessing you someone who keeps getting continuous belching and it is connected to the food that you eat when you the food that you eat and the problems you're having in digestion but there's continuous belching that you get the lord is touching and healing you a mother who is praying for a little child who has rashes on the skin the skin peels the lord is touching and healing the child because of the prayers of the mother 
pray and offer up as you pray for more of the Lord's presence within you, within your heart. I need you more, Jesus, more than my yesterday. Cry unto the Lord. With all your heart you pray, Alfie, pray unto the Lord, I need you more. person who gets blisters on your tongue the Lord is touching and healing you Deirdre the Lord is touching and blessing you strengthening your heart to share love with those around you someone who's struggling with a problem of bad breath the Lord is healing you A person who has given an advance, advance for a property, but there's no response from the other side. You're scared your advance money as well is gone. The Lord is blessing. Do not be afraid. He provides. A person who's had a very negative experience during the past months of burglary that took place in your home and you've been terrified after that offer it to Jesus the Lord soothes your heart he takes away the fear someone who's praying for the gift of vocation to religious life the Lord is confirming and blessing you. Do not be afraid. The Lord journeys with you. Let us offer and pray. All those intentions that are dear to our heart and offer it to the divine mercy. Praying that the Lord's mercy covers, purifies, and blesses the intentions we are holding dear to our heart. So as we are going to pray the chaplet of mercy, what is the intention that is dear to you? Place it in this chaplet of mercy. Are you praying for someone who is sick? Then all through the chaplet of mercy you place your hand where there is a sickness or an ailment for the person you're praying you place your hand on your body one hand on your body as you pray the chaplet is there something you need to be blessed something that's not going right even if it's your work or your studies place it at the feet of the Lord's mercy. Let this chaplet of mercy open doors that were closed before. Accept, O oh Lord, this prayer of trust and let your heart of mercy pour down mercy upon every intention we offer. We pray the chaplet. Opening prayer. You expired Jesus. 
but the source of life gushed forth for souls and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world o fount of life unfathomable divine mercy envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us o blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of jesus as a fount of mercy for us i trust in you o blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of jesus as a fount of mercy for us i trust, I trust in, in you o blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of jesus as a fount of mercy for us i trust in you our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen a person suffering with hernia and it is complicated you offer it during this chaplet the lord's mercy will be upon you hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of god the father almighty from there he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and life everlasting amen once again remember the intention that you have placed in the chaplet and may the lord's mercy and blessing be upon that intention amen you can be seated our brothers and sisters testify to what the lord has been doing for them during these adorations marilyn fernandez from pakistan I listened to the online masses and adoration televised by DRCC and find the homilies very interesting and touching so I started to take time outs time out to listen to the online retreats too recently I watched the 9 day retreat in preparation for holy week on one of the days father prayed for those who find it difficult to go for confession I claimed that for myself and when the retreat ended i was able to go for penitential service arranged by one of our churches during holy week and i was able to make my confession after 25 years i praise and thank jesus for giving me the grace and courage to confess to a priest knowing that i am looking at jesus hallelujah 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 viola ja testifies first of march my cousin had been unwell her fever was not leaving her eventually in the third week of march she was admitted in the hospital all the reports would come normal hence it was difficult for the doctors to understand to one of those days i happened to speak to her and i did tell her that i will pray for her during the adoration The next day while I was praying at the adoration father announced that someone is praying for her sister and God is answering the prayer I claim this healing for my cousin that very same evening the fever left her never to come back the next day she was discharged from the hospital I praise and thank Jesus for his touch and his love hallelujah 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 Anet from the US I follow the DRCC recorded streams every morning as my daily prayer from September 
On 16th of Feb, Father prayed for the healing of a heart ailment. I claimed it for my niece, who is 24 years old. And on the 27th of March, she had an echo and cardiogram done. She has been completely healed. I praise and thank Jesus for this blessing. Hallelujah. 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 Dear brothers and sisters, even as our friends testify to what Jesus is doing for them in, in their own personal lives, let it be a reminder to us what Jesus can do for us as well. We continue to pray with great faith, knowing that the Lord will always be with us. Our prayers, no one else wants it. Only Jesus wants our prayers. He will hold it dear to his heart and one day we will see the fruit of this prayer. Please do send in your testimonies um, to what the Lord has been doing through these adorations from Divine Colombo and let it be a testimony for people around to have faith as well. You can send in your testimonies to testimonies.drcc at gmail.com We have been praying and um, bringing out the treasures of the Divine Mercy, even if the Feast of the Divine Mercy is over, but going through the Diary of St. Faustina to understand the inner depths of Jesus' mercy. Though the Lord himself said, you will never be able to fathom the very depths of my mercy. So even if we don't get right to the inner depths, still we search for all the treasures of mercy that the Lord has in through, through the diary of St. Faustina. So we offer up and we pray. Today as we reflect, we take an incident that takes place in the life of St. Faustina. This is in paragraph 285. Um, here St. Faustina recalls in 1934 an incident when she goes back to her cell she has changed her um, dress to go off to rest. And even as she has undressed and she is now preparing to go to bed, one of the sisters comes and asks uh, for some hot water. And which means, um, unlike when we do it here, when we are changed, we still walk around the house with uh, no problems with whatever lay dress we have. But for the nuns in those, those times, they didn't obviously do it that way. They had to get dressed all over again. So she had to put on a habit. She had to put everything. And she just felt it was very unfair with someone coming and asking her to do something when they could have gone and done it herself, their self. And this is how she narrates the incident. As I returned to my cell, I was so tired that I had to rest a moment before I started to undress itself. And when I was already undressed, one of the sisters asked me to fetch some hot water. Although I was tired, I dressed quickly and brought her the water she wanted. Even though it was quite a long walk from the cell to the kitchen and the mud was ankle deep, when I re-entered my cell, I saw the ciborium with the blessed sacrament and I heard this voice of Jesus saying, Take this ciborium and bring it to the tabernacle. Take this ciborium and bring it to the tabernacle. We know what the ciborium is that holds the body of Jesus that we distribute Holy Communion um, during the Holy Mass. So Jesus tells her, take this ciborium, bring it to the tabernacle. I hesitated at first, but when I approached and touched it, I heard these words. Approach each of the sisters with the same love with which you approach me. And whatever you do for them, you do it for me. Approach each of the sisters, however unfair they might be, approach each of the sisters with the same love with which you approached that ciborium. Whatever you do it for them, you are doing it for me. The ciborium is sacred. It reminds us, sacred things remind us of the presence of Jesus. 
I remember speaking about the um, uh, the monstrance and how the the sacristans of old usually would never touch the monstrance with their bare hands. Um, they would take a purificator and they would hold the ciborium, the um, uh, uh, monstrance. So after I, I said that, one of our volunteers here, Romy, he will only use the, um, he sets up in the morning some days, he, when he's here, he sets up the altar. He will never touch the, the monstrance after that with his bare hands. He will always take the purificator and he will take the uh, monstrance and leave it here at the altar. Somewhere within, instilling within ourselves a reverence and a sacredness to that which holds Jesus. That's the same with the ciborium as well. And um, the ciborium is so sacred, it holds the body of Jesus. So here the Lord, Lord tells St. Faustina, when you approach each sister, approach them with the same love with which you approach that ciborium. With that same love knowing who is there in the ciborium. And that is beautiful for us to ask ourselves, do I approach my brother, my sister with the same love with which I would approach a sacred a sacred vessel that holds Jesus. Will I approach Father Joby? Will I approach Jerry with the same love with which I approach the ciborium that holds Jesus? The moment I see the ciborium, the moment I see the monstrance, I know it is sacred because it holds the one who is holy. So how do I approach my brother, my sister? As the Lord says here to St. Faustina at the end, whatever you do for them, you do it for me. We have heard this before as well. We have heard this in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25 when Jesus says, whatever you did to the least of my brethren, you did it to me. When you fed the hungry, when you gave something to drink to the thirsty, when you visited the prisoner, you did it to me. But sometimes in that we can always feel, well, th these are good people maybe. The one who is hungry is hungry not because of their own problem. So it's easier to do it for them maybe. The one who is thirsty, maybe it's easier to do it for them. But for the ones who we don't like very much, the ones who irritate us, the ones who trouble us, are we able to see them and approach them in the same way we would approach the ciborium? You know, here itself, with the ciboriums that we have, when I was coming back from Melbourne, um, um, an acquaintance, a person um, who was watching all the online streams as well and, and met me and gave me, uh, gifted me a ciborium, which I like very much. It's very beautiful. And uh, something about the ciboriums in, uh, uh, in European countries and in Australia, all the vessels are, um, all the sacred vessels are all very beautiful. It's, first of all, the quality is good. The, um, the color doesn't go off. And um, it doesn't feel cheap. Uh, sometimes the vessels we get from India, uh, they can look very nice for the initial year or so. But after some time, you start seeing the color changing. Uh, it starts getting dense and little. It changes its shape. But the ones in, in Europe and in Australia, you get some very, very good things. Uh, I was in Singapore recently and, and the vessels they had were so beautiful. The monstrance was so beautiful and you could feel the quality of it. So in all my humanness here, whenever I see that ciborium that is given, I like to use it and put it in the, in the tabernacle. Father Joby is not that kind, so he will take what his hands reach out to first. Now, I don't want to make a big deal out of it, so I keep quiet. But in my heart, it's, you know, the other one's still there. So there is a like and a dislike to the ciborium itself. What I'm going to choose for the Mass, I have a like and a dislike. 
he also has a like and dislike according to what he has bought so if he's gone to kerala and bought something and come back he has his likes and dislikes based on that the same way we have likes and dislikes even for the ciborium but the moment the ciborium is inside the tabernacle for me now it it cannot matter of course when i look at it there is an attitude i look at it and i still think you know maybe the other ciborium is better and yet the content of who is in the ciborium then brings me to my senses and that's the same maybe the people we meet remember who they hold they are the tabernacle they are the ciborium and can i be merciful to them and that is what jesus tells saint faustina when you approach the sisters and to us when you approach your brother your sister approach them like you are approaching the ciborium with the love with which you approach the ciborium let us ask the lord for that grace and that heart of mercy to approach them like we are approaching the sacred vessels because my brother my sister is a sacred vessel holding the treasure of jesus in them it is not easy it is always hard even though i look at the tabernacle and i look inside i see the the ciborium that i'm not very fond of my mind initially always tunes in and thinks the other one was better maybe we have that as well how much ever we try we look at someone and we think you know maybe i don't feel very comfortable but remind ourselves of who is there within the lord's presence and to approach them with the love and mercy that jesus approaches us as well let's pray for that grace today let's all kneel as we are offering up the decades of the chaplet let us offer up in a special way all those people who we really struggle with we might not hate them but we don't feel very comfortable with them but they are the ciborium that holds the precious jesus the lord's presence is in them so let us offer them as we pray the first decade of the chaplet eternal father i offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world eternal father i offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world in the second decade of the chaplet let us offer up the youth especially the youth in our homes and in our families the ones who are confused about their faith the ones who are confused about the teachings of the church the ones who are far away from the church and do not want to come back let us offer them as we pray this decade of the chaplet for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion 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 eternal father i offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world in this decade of the chaplet let us pray for all those who are going through depression all those who are struggling with mental illnesses those who are not are feeling helpless about what they are going through they want a change they want a transformation and it isn't happening those who are struggling with all kinds of mental ailments and depression let us bring them into the lord's mercy and pray for his mercy to bring healing upon them for the sake of his sorrowful passion for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world eternal father i offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world in this decade of the chaplet pray for your parish church pray for your parish community pray for your small christian communities offer them into the presence of jesus there could be someone in your parish someone in your small christian community who really needs a prayer today let the lord's mercy touch them protect them and bless them for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world eternal father i offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world in this decade of the chaplet let us pray for ourselves pray for the intention that is dearest to yourself pray for the lord's mercy to cover that intention and to bless it that that intention will bear fruit in abundance with great thirst with great faith and with great passion we pray for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world holy god holy, holy god. mighty one holy, holy mortal one have mercy on us and on the whole world holy god holy, holy mighty one holy, holy mortal one have mercy on us and on the whole world holy god holy mighty one holy mortal one have mercy on us and on the whole world the closing prayer eternal god 
in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will which is love and mercy itself amen offering up ourselves let his grace and his mercy flow into all the intentions we offered here and the intention that you have kept for today's chaplet today's adoration let that intention be blessed and covered in the lord's mercy as we pray and we offer our hearts to the lord and thirst for his mercy to cover his mercy to touch his mercy to bless what so today asking jesus lord give us the grace when we step out to see my brother my sister and to see them as the ciborium that holds you to love them in the way i would lovingly touch the ciborium knowing that your presence will be there give me that grace oh jesus i pray Lord Jesus there will be people today I will meet who will be very hard to deal with they will be unfair to me they will be nasty to me there will be those that I meet who will never understand me and those who might even harm me but when I see them let my eyes only see the ciborium that holds my blessed Jesus and to reach out to them with mercy to reach out to them with the love that you fill my heart i pray what so Lord Jesus when i go to bed tonight i should be able to look back at my day and with a heart of humility feel triumphant that i was able to share mercy where it was hard when i saw my brother my sister i didn't react rather i saw them as that beautiful ciborium holding my jesus Tonight when I go to bed oh Jesus I should not go to bed defeated by what the evil one wants me to do but I should go to bed triumphant knowing that I did what my Jesus would want me to do to show mercy
Lord, I am prepared to step out into the world. With the mercy that you have filled my heart, I will now step out into my family and I will see them as the ciborium that's holding my Jesus. I will step out into my workplace and each person I see there, I will see the ciborium that holds Jesus. In my, when I'm on the way, I'm in a public transport. Each person I see, each person I bump into, everyone, let me see the ciborium that holds Jesus. Give me that grace as I entrust myself to your divine mercy. We pray the prayer of entrustment. O Lord our God, we place our trust in you because you are mercy itself. We repent of our sins and turn to you for mercy. We trust you to provide for our every need according to your will. Help us to forgive others as you forgive us. We promise to be merciful by our deeds, words and prayers. Though we have fears because of human weakness, we rely on your infinite goodness and mercy. We entrust to you the future of our planet, our church, our nations, our families and all our needs. With loud cries we implore your mercy on us and on the whole world. Look upon us, created in your image and likeness. Form us in the heart of Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit into the living images of mercy. May all who come, may all come to know the depth of your mercy and sing the praises of your mercy forever. Amen. Let us prepare to receive the Lord's blessing down in adoration. Have given them bread from heaven, having it excelled for delight. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Mother, pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. We will now prepare ourselves to celebrate the Eucharist. The Good Shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ. Let us offer all our prayer intentions unto the Lord. Especially please pray with us for the Sinhala Residential Retreat that begins here at Divine Retreat Center Colombo from this Thursday afternoon from the 18th to the 21st. Please say a prayer for all those who would be attending this retreat and all those who are preparing for this inner healing retreat. We pray for world peace, especially 
all those warring nations and all those people who are going through a lot of stress the after effects of war destruction we shall remember and pray surrendering <clears throat> those nations into the hands of the lord for his mercy and protection brethren now let us recall to mind our sins our failures and our shortcomings we shall ask our heavenly father to forgive us and to make us worthy to celebrate these sacred mysteries of our salvation and so with a contrite heart we pray together i confess to almighty, to almighty god, god and, and to you my brothers and sisters that i have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what i have done and in what i have failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault therefore i ask blessed mary our virgin all the angels and saints and you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the lord our god may almighty god have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life let us pray grant we pray almighty god that putting off our old self with all its ways we may live as christ did for through the healing paschal mysteries you have conformed us to his nature who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking a reading from the acts of the apostles chapter 6 verses 8 to 15 in those days stephen full of grace and power was doing great wonders and signs among the people then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen as it was called and of the cyrenians and of the alexandrians and of those from cilicia and asia rose up and disputed with stephen but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking then they secretly instigated men who said we have heard him speak blasphemous words against moses and god and they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and they came upon him and seized him and brought him before the council and they set up false witnesses who said this man never ceases to speak words against this holy place and the law for we have heard him say that this jesus of nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that moses delivered to us and gazing at him all who sat in the council saw that his face was like the face of an angel the word of the lord thanks be to god responsorial psalm your response is blessed are those who walk in the law of the lord blessed, blessed are those, those who walk, walk in the law of the lord Though princes sit plotting against me your servant ponders your son shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the praise the lord Lord 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After 5,000 men had eaten their fill, the disciples of Jesus saw him walking on the sea. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the lake saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, in our culture in Kerala, there are many parishes, churches, where they celebrate the parish feast with uh, a meal provided for everyone, a shared meal, but it's cooked uh, in the church and everyone comes on the day before, they bring their own shares and they help in the cooking, in preparing for the meal and even serving the meal the next day. And this was happening, this was taking place in this parish as a tradition for many, 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 many years. And one of the priests from that parish, but he was not working in that parish, but that he, after becoming priest, and after a few years of going around in different places, he was sharing something about this. People are no more asking who is celebrating the main holy mass, the solemn mass on the festal day, but people start to ask, who is the main chef for this common meal that is provided? So he was saying, when I was that parish as a boy or as a teenager, even before joining the seminary, it was not like that. Everyone was looking for the priest who would come for the mass and who would come for the homily, and if the priest is a very good singer and who would lead the choir, these were the topics at one point. But later, it became a point after the time of the social media and they get to know the chefs and get to know the way of cooking. And now the question is, who is doing, who is the main chef? And also sometimes it takes place. There is a column or there is a name of the chef also in the notice published for the feast celebration. So he was telling me how the transition is slowly taking place. So in a way he was telling people come not for the mass but for the meal. My dear brothers and sisters, meal in spiritual places has a lot of things to do. Here... In this gospel context, Jesus is telling them when they came in search of Jesus, after Jesus had given five loaves, uh, multiplied five loaves from five loaves for 5,000, he walked on the water 
and now they are all searching for Jesus and, and there is a little bit of intelligence happening here. They are thinking Jesus did not get into the boat with them but he, is, he has not gone but he is seen there and all of them following Jesus. So they figure out where Jesus could be and they reach and meet Jesus. When did you come? See what Jesus answers. He says, you came not because you heard my words but you had your fill. You came for bread, not for the word. You came for the bread, not for the word. Or in other words, Jesus was saying, you came to eat, not to believe. Your life is totally on this earth, on this level. You're not trying to go beyond what I told you. You're not trying to understand what i told you you don't not you are not going beyond what you have seen there is more a sign that is a word saint john uses in this gospel passage you came to me because you ate not because you saw the sign a sign is something that is leading you beyond what you see a healing miracle that takes place in your life it is not just to dwell on what you got it is more than that, to have that zeal for the Lord, to respond to the Lord in love, even in moments when you are sick. It is not just a reminder, a sickness, you got healed, you got another sickness, you asked for healing, you got healed. It's not just to be like that. It is to be even without, even when I am sick, I'm praying for healing at the same time, I'm responding to the Lord with love. That is faith. And that is, what the, the, that is how the passage ends. What should we do? To believe. Believe in the one whom the father has sent. What shall we do? They said to him, Rabbi. Then they said to him, what must we do? To be doing the works of God. So this is the core of this gospel passage. It's not just about bread. It's not just about they're going after Jesus for bread. Jesus is leading them to do the works of God. Jesus is leading them to do the works of God. And how can I do that? Only if you believe in the one who the Lord has sent. Only if you obey the words. Not just what you see, but the words that leads you to more than what you just see. My dear sisters and brothers, sometimes what happens with our life also, we are just stuck to the world. If I put it in a simple way, we need Jesus just to live on the earth. We just bring Jesus down just to my day-to-day -day petty things. Maybe I am so blind even not to think of an eternity where I'll be united with the Father. I'll be united with God. And I'll be praising him with angels and saints. Instead of looking that even a little things that is happening, disturbing me on the earth, I'm crying out to Jesus. Jesus, I have a sickness. Jesus, I have a financial problem. And I dwell on that. And once I, that is healed, that is healed. Once that solve, problem is solved, I am okay. I can't go beyond that. It's just because I am looking only for bread. I'm not looking for to obey the word. Today Jesus is turning our heart. Turning our eyes. Just like I said, as I said in the first, uh, first incident, first example. Not to the meal, but from the meal to the bread that is from the altar of the Lord. Jesus is leading us from the meal to the altar. Am I ready to come to the altar rather than just dwell among, dwell on these little things on the earth? So Jesus is asking us, not look for the bread, but you look for my word. My word will provide you bread and will lead you to eternity. So my dear sisters and brothers, let us take that into our heart. Jesus leading our heart to eternity rather than just dwelling on the earth. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we ask of you this grace. Sometimes we are too
too earthly too much earthly we think only of the needs when we are living on the earth sometimes those things make us so blind to think about the eternity as well we just think we are living here and dying and that's it but lord you have given a soul that has to be united to you or give us a grace to transcend everything that is on the earth and to think of our eternal life where we will be united with you and praise you not just to look for bread but to look for every word that is guiding us and to obey the word that you speak unto us we make this prayer through Christ our lord amen Pray brethren that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father may the lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church may our prayers rise up to you o lord together with the sacrificial offerings so that purified by your graciousness we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our lord Amen. the lord be with you with lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the lord our god it is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you o lord but in this time above all to lord you yet more gloriously when christ our passover has been sacrificed He never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people excels in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying 
take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith we proclaim your death o lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit Remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our pope Malcolm Cardinal Ranjith Arch bishop the auxiliary bishops and all the clergy Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face Have mercy on us all we pray in a special way for all the retreatants who attended the retreat the couples retreat and have returned home and for those who will attend the sinhala retreat this coming week that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god blessed joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles with saint vincent de paul and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son Jesus Christ through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever at the savior's command and formed by divine teaching we lovingly pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ Lord Jesus Christ you said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever Amen. the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit so let us offer each other a loving sign of peace Lamb of God you take, take away the, the sins, sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us peace and let us so receive it Jesus Christ son of the living God who by the will of the father and work of the holy spirit through your death gave life to the world 
Free us by this your most holy body and blood. From all our sins and from every evil, keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us all safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Nor as the world gives do I give it to you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us serve the Lord in love and peace. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Prayer for priests. O Jesus, eternal priest. Keep all your priests within the shelter of your sacred heart, where none may harm them. Keep unstained the anointed hands, which daily touch your sacred body. Keep unsullied their lips, purple with your precious blood. Keep pure and unearthly their hearts, sealed with the sublime marks of your glorious priesthood. Let your holy love surround them and shield them from the world's contagion. Bless their labors with abundant fruit. And may the souls to whom they have ministered to be their joy and consolation, and in heaven their beautiful and everlasting crown. O Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us and obtain for us many holy priests. Amen. So dear friends, please do continue to join us for the Divine Mercy Retreat every day in the morning. We are also having the Sinhala retreat this, um, this coming Thursday onwards. So please do let your family and friends know about it. It's an inner healing retreat. Um, we are also having our retreats in May. 
uh, the first weekend retreats, the one-day retreats, um, based on the devotions to the Sacred Heart, the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Holy Trinity. The 3rd of May is the first Friday. It will be in Tamil, the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And the 4th, the first Saturday, will be in Sinhala, to the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And on the 5th in English, the first Sunday of the month, and it will be dedicated to the Holy Trinity. So please do join us. Please let others know about it and join us for this retreat as well. On the 9th, from the 9th to the 12th of May, in preparation for Pentecost, we'll be having the Pentecostal retreat in English, the residential retreat. You'll have to book early, so please do let um, your family and friends know. Please do come for it. This is from the 9th to the 12th, the Pentecost retreat in English. And from the 16th to the 19th, we will have the Marian retreat in Tamil. And Father Anthony Payapali, who was in charge of the uh, Tamil section at the Divine Retreat Center in Kerala, he will be there for that retreat, the Marian retreat in Tamil. So please do join us for these retreats. God bless you all and may you have a blessed day. God bless you, Father. God bless you, Father. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander to the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>